Let's talk about the seven foods that will lower your bad cholesterol, the LDL. But I really need to clarify this bad cholesterol because there's so much confusion. Every time I do my um, live show on Friday morning, um, this question comes up over and over and over. So I'm just going to do another video to try to make it really, really simple and understandable. So there's two types of LDL. But if we just take a step back and just talk about cholesterol, when you get your blood profile and it says your total cholesterol, you have to realize that they're not measuring this cholesterol that's floating down your bloodstream because cholesterol can't float down the bloodstream because it's all fat soluble. It doesn't mix with water. So when they say total cholesterol, what they really mean is all the cholesterol in these different protein shuttles, okay? And primarily I'm talking about HDL and LDL. There's other shuttles, but let's just keep this really simple. So when you see total cholesterol, what you're really seeing is you're just combining the cholesterol in the LDL and the HDL, generally speaking. And so when we talk about HDL, which is considered the good cholesterol, really what HDL is, it's the cholesterol going from the arteries or the cells back to the liver. And the LDL, which people say is bad, is going from the liver to the cells or the arteries. So this next part I'm going to talk about is really important because if you see your LDL very high, okay, you're going to probably might be concerned. But when you go to the doctor and get your prescription to get your cholesterol tested, they nearly always test LDL cholesterol, okay? They don't check anything else related to LDL. And there are two different measurements for LDL. And this is really, really important to understand because the real villain on cholesterol and heart problems is a very specific type of LDL. And it relates to a test that you would have to ask for. It's an advanced lipid profile test and it stands for LDLP, particle. You're looking at the number of particles and the size of the particles, okay? Now, what is a particle? Well, like I said before, it's a carrier, okay? It kind of carries this cholesterol because it has to have this protein little capsule to transport it. So there's two particle sizes of LDL. There is the large buoyant version, which is pattern A. Now, buoyant means it floats, okay? It floats to the surface. So it's these large fluffy particles that are floating through the bloodstream, right? They're carrying cholesterol. Then you have the small dense particles, okay? Those are the small ones that have the ability to penetrate the inside of the artery because the inside of the artery is just like one cell thickness. It's not very thick. And that's where you have the problem, okay? That's the one that is atherogenic, not the large buoyant LDL. It's the small dense LDL. That's the one you need to be concerned about. Now, the question I have for you is which one do you think has more cholesterol? If you guess the large buoyant, you are correct. So if you get your blood value back and it says your LDL cholesterol is high, it doesn't tell you anything about the particles of what type of particles you have more of. It mainly tells you how much cholesterol. In fact, there's people that have low LDL cholesterol and have higher amounts of the small dense LDL particle size. And there are a lot of people who have high LDL cholesterol and have larger amounts of this large buoyant pattern A type of LDL. So anytime you do your cholesterol, be insistent about getting this advanced lipid profile because it's so badly important. It'll give you the whole picture of what's going on. Now let's talk a little bit more about this small dense LDL, okay? And you're going to see it as um, a small s and a small d and then LDL on your blood profile. Now, the first thing you know is you're going to see more of this profile, the small dense LDL, when you have metabolic syndrome, when you have insulin resistance, when you have obesity, when you have diabetes. You may also see this pattern, like I said before, when you have less or lowered amount of LDL-C, the cholesterol, which we're not evaluating the particles, we're just evaluating the cholesterol inside of these particles. And the reason I'm trying to bring this whole thing up is because there's so much connection between cholesterol and heart problems. 
and especially if you don't understand these key points right here, you can be concerned. Atherogenic LDL is the one that is the small, dense version, okay? That's the one that's involved in glycation. The, the word glycation, basically, you're, you're meshing a sugar with a protein. So you actually render that protein uh, non-functional. So it creates problems with the proteins in your lining of your arteries. Also, this type of measurement is involved with oxidation. So that's another factor that's related to inflammation, free radical damage, a perfect storm for the invasion of microbes and biofilms and placking and a whole cascade of things. But many times in placking in your arteries, you also have these biofilms, which are basically microorganisms in certain calcium shells. And they tend to accumulate on these rough edges in your arteries um, caused by the oxidation or the inflammation. So small dense LDL is a strong predictor by 3x of cardiovascular disease. Now, the other interesting thing about this is that if you are on a statin drug, um, your cholesterol will come down. But statin drugs don't reduce this small dense LDL. In fact, they might increase it. All right, so now the question comes down to how do we lower, very specifically, the real culprit, the real bad LDL, the small, dense version? Well, there are some foods that you can eat that will help you. And I'm going to put the research down below that validates this. Each food that I'm going to talk about has a significant lowering effect on the small, dense LDL, okay? Number one, extra virgin olive oil. Now you have to make sure you get the real extra virgin olive oil because there's so much fake stuff out there, but there is a really good study that I'm gonna put down below that validates that. Now, number two, avocados, okay? Avocado can also reduce your small dense LDL. And then we have fish oils. Uh, I like to do cod liver oil, but you can use fish oils as well. Um, now the omega-3 fatty acids that are doing this, um, you have both EPA, and DHA. Apparently, it's the EPA that has this uh, lowering effect. The next food is pistachios. Okay, pistachios can also lower the small dense LDL. Then we have dark chocolate. Okay, and of course, the one that I would recommend is the one without sugar. And then we have almonds. Almonds have a lowering effect on the small dense lipoprotein. And lastly, walnuts can also help you with your bad cholesterol. Now, there's a couple other really interesting things about this topic. Niacin, the type of niacin that causes that flushing response can very potently switch from one particle size to the other. It can switch from the small dense LDL to the large buoyant LDL. That's pretty cool. And also has a moderate lowering effect of your LDL cholesterol itself. Next thing you can do is exercise. Exercise will also lower this small, dense LDL. And another thing will help too if you have a really stubborn problem, and that would be Tutka. Tutka is a very specific type of bile salt that helps eliminate excess cholesterol. You have to realize the regulation of cholesterol in the body is controlled by bile salts. In fact, bile salts are made from cholesterol. And so if you are deficient in bile, let's say you have a fatty liver, or let's say you don't have a gallbladder, or just say that you've been on bad foods that have made things very, very uh, slow or sluggish within the bile ducts, that could be the reason why your cholesterol is not coming down, in which case you want to start taking bile salts, especially for those that have a genetic high cholesterol situation. And as a side note, if you do have a genetic problem with your cholesterol, um, and you want to do the ketogenic diet, which I highly recommend with fasting, um, the thing you want to do is not necessarily completely go low fat. You just want to avoid the extra fat that a lot of people take on the ketogenic diet, which means you don't want to take the extra MCT oil. You don't want to start consuming the keto bomb treats filled with fat and butter, but you do want to increase the fish oils and the fish, that type of thing, because that is not going to increase your problem. And one last very important point, the worst thing to consume would be sugar, especially fructose, okay? But sugar will tend to worsen things for you. And I'm also including 
in that all the refined carbohydrates as well. Now, since you're on the topic of LDL, I created a very interesting video called The Real Reason Why Your Arteries Are Calcifying and Turning Into Bone. I put it up right here. Check it out. 